Hello, everybody. Welcome to my talk. My name is Yu Zhang. In this talk, I will introduce the downgrade attacks against the Bluetooth low energy. This is a joint work with five universities. So, what is the PLE or what is the Bluetooth low energy? So, PLE is the first generation of the Bluetooth. When compared with the Bluetooth Classic, it has multiple advanced features such as low power consumption, large coverage, and it introduced the attribute protocol known as the ATD protocol. The ATD protocol groups all the data in the format of attributes and allows our smartphone to work with a PLE device in a client and a server mode, like what happened in the TCP IP communication. Due to the use of such a client and a server mode, our smartphone can now communicate with all kinds of IoT devices, such as smart watches, smart locks, smart plugs, and smart lights. In the traditional client and the server mode, in TCP, client and the server may use TC TLS SSL to secure the communication. In BLE, two BLE devices relies on a pairing process for its security. We know that the TLS SSL can achieve a mutual application, but how about that in BLE? Can BLE also achieve a mutual application? Okay, let's look at the workflow of the pairing process and find out. This is the workflow of the BLE pairing. Initially, an app or the mobile have to start the pairing process. Afterwards, two devices exchange the pairing process, which indicates what type of pairing method the two devices support. Then, the mobile and the device determine a suitable pairing method based on the exchange the pairing features. There are four pairing methods are available including just works, plus key entry, numeric compression, and auto bath. Two devices start to distribute keys after that. Multiple keys can be distributed, such as the identity resolution key, known as the ARK. The ARK can be used to uniquely identify the identities of the pairing devices. Finally, the two devices start to use the generated case to encrypt the link and communicate with each other. Recall that there are four pairing methods are available and the BLE also specify as security levels for the pairing method. Among them, just works and plan ticks are not secure since there is no authentication process is involved. Plastic entry and the numeric compression are secure and have a higher security levels. BLE also specify the strongest security levels for the BLE devices, named the secure connections only mode or the SCO mode. When a device in a SCO mode, the device must use the plastic entry or numeric compression to authenticate the mobile. Our observation is that, according to BLE specification, the SCL mode is only enforced at the device set, which provides the services, but uh, it's not enforced at the initiator set, which consumes the data services. And as a result, multiple flaws can be derived. With the secure connection only mode enabled, the device requires a pass key entry on the mirror compression to authenticate in the mobile, and should I reject an insecure connection initiated by a malicious mobile. Okay, but uh, this mode is not enforced for mobile. So the mobile is not enforced to authenticate the device side, meaning that the mobile can accept an insecure parent method initiated by a malicious device. We further propose the four capabilities for an initiator, like a mobile, 
to enable such a SEO mode. Our, our idea is that the OS should have the capability to allow an app to specify and enforce the secure pairing method. Since the app is designed for the device, and the app should know if the device supports the secure pairing method or not. By saying that, we mean initially the app should have the capability to specify the secure pairing method, indicate the app really needs a secure pairing method. We'll determine the pairing method. The OS should enforce the secure pairing method if the app requires security and notify the app of the result. Errors may occur. If errors occur, the OS should let the app to handle those errors and then the app may further determine if it still wants to secure the pairing process or still wants to continue the communication process. Keys can be broken due to the misconfiguration or some kind of attacks. The app should have the capability to remove a broken key so as to start a new pairing process. If the four capabilities are not enabled, OS have to handle the pairing process in a compatible way without enforcing the secure pairing method. However, lack of the fork capability is the root cause of the downgrade attacks. For example, in our attack, a fork device can pretend to be the real device and say the OS, an error code, telling the OS that it does not have the encryption key. When the OS receives the error code, it, it does not have the capability to notify the app. So as a result, the OS and the device communicate with each other in Plattex without, without enforcing the secure pairing, meaning that there is no authentication is involved during the communication. In such a way, an uh, attacker can go around the application process and the encryption process as well. We now further look at the workflow of the downgrade attacks. We assume that before our attack, the mobile and the device have been paired with the secure pair method, such as the passkey entry and the numeric compression. A fake device pretends to be the victim device at the leverage of the four flaws discussed earlier. As a result, the OS does not notify the app errors, but accept the insecure connection. The mobile and the fake device communicate in plaques without any like astication or encryption. The fake device can now inject any data to the victim mobile and steal sensitive information from the victim mobile. In the next step, a fake, a fake device steals mobile's IR key and uses the IR key to create a fake mobile. Deploying our toys are beyond the mobile. The secure parent methods are downgraded to insecure ones because of the four flaws. So we named our attacks as the downgrade attacks. Here are eight attacks we identified. Four of them against the initiators, such as mobile, and then the other four against the peer device. We now discuss the device. Based on the previous discussion, we know that the attacks are caused by the lack of the four capabilities on the mobile side. No, so we enable the four capabilities so as to pitch the flaws. For example, we enable the capabilities for apps to handle the errors. When the error occurs, the app can decide if it still needs the secure pairing. We now look at the evaluation. Okay, we first evaluate our attacks on multiple uh, OSs 
including Android, iOS, Mac OS, Windows, and Linux. All of those uh, OS subject to, are subject to our attacks. For example, we test our attacks on different versions of Android, and none of them are secure. As a result, most of the manufacturers patch the flaws accordingly. Since the attacks go beyond the mobile, we also test them on multiple real devices, and all of those devices are subject to our attacks. We built a keystroke hailing, uh, hacking tool against the, the BLE keyboard. One of our experiments indicates that the attacking distance reaches more than 19 meters. Attacker may have a competition with the victim mobile in connecting device. In our other experiment, we show that with a higher addressing frequency, an uh, attacker can have a better chance to deploy attacks. We also evaluated the device or IOSP, and the result shows that it has a very small footprint. We now conclude our talk. In this talk, we introduce the downgrade attacks. The cause of the attack is that there is no SEO mode enabled at the, S at the initiator side. Regarding this, there are four capabilities are required. Our conclusion is that SEO mode must be enforced at both sides so as to achieve the strongest security. We valued our attacks on multiple OS and many real devices. Thank you very much for your valuable time.